quicker than... Dobson, Dobson. When he grabbed pole position for the race, some 2.3 seconds quicker than British world champion Steve Webster, and nearly three quarters of a second better than the best 500cc solo rider. For the chances of that lap record being repeated in the race, dash because rain is threatening at the start of the event, and from the start, it's Billand with Kurt Walshisberg in the chair into the lead, with Anna Michel and Jean-Marc Presque in second place, the Zerbrug brothers in third spot, and Steve Webster and Tony Hewitt in fourth place. And Billand quickly pulling away from Michel, with Webster up into third place, pushing Alfred and Martin Zerbrug back into fourth spot. Billands crowds are powered LCR tuned by Austrian Harold Bartel, an absolute rocket ship. Billand, Michel, Webster and Zerbrug. Fifth is Rolf Steinhausen and Bruno Hiller in sixth place. Then Egbert, Stroyer and Bernie Steiners down in twelfth spot. And their lucky strike teammates Theo Van Kempen and Simon Birchall even further back. Billand still leading, there's Steinhausen with his sidecar on the opposite side to the rest of the field. The second lap just started, the umbrellas up on pit road, but no protection from the elements from the competitors. Billand, the comfortable leader. Michel in second place, Webster and Zerbrug still together. And Webster has gone ahead of Michel and turn one, gone through on the inside, and Kamano's ahead of Steinhausen to take fifth place. Conditions worsen. Billand has slowed, but Webster is quickening his pace. The gap is beginning to shrink. And Billand glances over his shoulder to keep a wary eye on the opposition. Webster second, then Michel, then Zerbrug. And Billand has been forcing too quick a pace. He's spun off. He's got the outfit going again and he hurtles back onto the track, but he slipped back to ninth place. And before Rolf can hit race pace again, two more outfits go by him. The wind has picked up and it's raining very heavily now. Webster starting to stretch the lead over his French and Swiss pursuers. The end of three laps, Webster and Hewitt, the world champions, out in front. The engine notes soar as the lead outfits get wheel spin on the rain-soaked surface. Webster leads. But he's up the curb and using all the track to stay ahead. A little cautious, perhaps, round the right-hander where Billan spun. But it's still a quick pace for the conditions. Kumano is fourth, the Egglofts fifth. And incredibly, that's Billan up into sixth, despite his excursion. Stroyer is ninth. The rain lashing down. No change in the top three. Kamano with Egloff tucked in behind him and Villan shadowing them both. Steinhausen is seventh. The rain is pouring down and the wind blowing harder than ever. Four laps completed, but trying to drive these high-powered outfits on slick tyres is becoming a serious problem. No change in the top three. But Billand has pushed his way through to fourth place, with Kamano and Egloff side by side behind him. Egbert Stroyer is up into seventh spot with a bunch of outfits breathing down his neck. And a big, big slide there for Webster, and he's slowed dramatically. Anna Michel is catching him. Tony Hewitt, Webster's passenger, raises his hand. The world champions have had enough. Michel sportingly throws in the towel too, and the Zerbrugs have slowed down as well. Now, will the others decide it's too dangerous to go on racing? The leaders are touring back to the start, spread across the track, 
and waving to slow the others down. Here's Billand, and his hand shoots into the air. He's had enough as well, and the others agree. The fans dashing for safety, except for a few brave souls like those. And Rider Power has won the day. The race will be restarted, and the aggregate times from the two legs will decide the result. There'll be a 30-minute break to see what conditions will be like and to enable the competitors to decide what tyres to use in the second race. Uh, but not everyone's going to stay for the outcome as the fans hurry for shelter. And it must be Christmas here in Erez. There's the pantomime horse going past in the background. The rain has stopped. The track still very wet. The field split between soft wet tyres, hard wet tyres and intermediates and away they go in the rerun. Belland again hits the front but Webster left struggling a little bit on the grid into the first turn. It's Billand, Michel, Webster and Stroyer fourth. Steve Abbott number six there in the middle of the pack. The spray billowing up from those big wide sidecar tyres. Billand setting the pace. Stroyer is up into second spot. Webster is third. Egloff is fourth. <laughs> Michelle down into fifth place and dropping back. Kamano is there and Barry Brindley going well too. The end of the opening lap in this, the second leg. It's Billand, the leader, Stroyer, and Webster loses a place to Egloff. <laughs> Webster, the world champion, down in fourth position. Michel holding fifth place. Billand, Stroyer, Egloff, Webster struggling at the moment. And Kamano shows just how slippery it is even with wet weather tyres on. Just listen to wheel spin on Billand's outfit as he hurtles past the pits. Billand again out in front in a class of his own. Trouble at turn one. Kamano has spun at the right-hander. The outfit almost overturns, but his passenger has been thrown out and he's lying on the track dazed. Officials quickly on the scene, but Kamano doesn't quite know what to do, it seems. He's wandering around, looking very shaken. The closing stages of the race, and Stroyer has closed the gap on Billen, but it's total time that will decide the outcome. And Stroyer definitely needs to get ahead of Billen if he's going to be the overall winner. Webster a comfortable third, now that the Eggloffs have been forced to retire with mechanical problems, but the Yorkshireman needs to catch those front two to win overall. The chequered flag for Billand, Stroyer close behind, just half a second in fact. But on total time, it's Billand with the maximum points. Stroyer second overall by less than two seconds. And Webster third in this race and third overall. And Webster can probably put his disappointing result down to the wrong choice of tyres. He picked a hard compound, wet weather Avon, while the men ahead of him were on softer rubber. But there's eight more rounds to go. Good start for Barry Brindley and Graham Rose, who grabbed fourth ahead of Alan Michel and Steve Abbott. <laughs>